Hi there, Perfectly Castro here and welcome to my YouTube channel. I hope you're having a great day. This video is part five of my music theory for guitarists video series. If you're coming to this video without having seen parts one, 1.5, 1 2, 3, 4, and 4.5 yet, I suggest you watch those first before continuing so that you are up to speed. And if you haven't yet, please hit that subscribe button, ring that notification bell so that you'll know exactly when I upload a new video. Now, a quick announcement before we begin. If you're watching this on YouTube, take a look below the video box and you will see the YouTube merch shelf. So that makes it easy for everybody to buy their own Practice Makes Perfecto shirt like what I'm wearing right now, plus a few other designs. All merch sales support this channel and help me keep making these videos for all of you to enjoy. And if your region doesn't support the YouTube merch shelf, you can always buy PDC merch at my Threadless store, perfectodecastro.threadless.com. In this video, we'll talk about the harmonized scale, also known as diatonic chords. The previous music theory for guitarists videos have taught you the musical alphabet, how to find those notes on the guitar fretboard. We've also talked about the major scale key signatures and how to build chords. So the next step is to build chords in every scale degree using only the notes within that major scale. And that's pretty much what the harmonized scale is. It is a scale built of chords instead of single notes. It's also called diatonic chords because once you've built the harmonized scale, it will give you all the chords that will work within the chosen key. As with my previous videos, I'm going at it old school with my pen and my notebook right here. So feel free to follow along. Now to start, let's lay out the notes of C major scale, Old Faithful. So C, D, E, F, G, A, B. And we will designate this as our root or the one. Now think back to our chord building video. We need three tones. The first, the third, and the fifth. So I'm going to put the third right below the first and the fifth right below the third. Now what we're gonna do next is take the third from C, which is E, and we're gonna write that in. And then we're going to fill in the rest of the major scale notes, but this time starting on E. Okay, so E, F, G, A, B, C, D. Now after laying out the third row, let's go to the fifth row. So the fifth from C is G and we're going to follow the same procedure. G and then lay out all the C major notes starting on G. Okay, so now we have this little grid happening right here. Now, not only can we look at this grid horizontally like this, which will give us the major scale notes. We can also look at it vertically, which will give us the triad notes. So now you have C, the third of C is E, and the fifth of C is G. And that follows for the rest of the scale degrees as well. Now let's examine the type of chords that we have. So C, G, that is a major chord. So I'm gonna put this right here, major. D, F, A is a minor chord because F is a minor third above D. E, G, B is also another minor chord. F, A, C is a major chord. G, B, D is a major chord. A, C, E is another minor chord. And finally, we have B, D, F, which is a diminished chord. B to D is a minor third. D to F is also a minor third. And F in relation to B is a flatted fifth or diminished fifth. So we're gonna put diminished right here. Now, in the same way that we assigned number names to our scale degrees when we talked about intervals, we can also assign number names to each chord, right? But this time, instead of using our regular alphanumeric numbers, we're going to use Roman numerals. Your first chord will be your one or the root, and then you'll have two, and then three, and then four, five, six, seven. Now the distinction being, if you have a big cap Roman numeral, that means it's a major chord. 
if it's a small cap Roman numeral, it's a minor chord. And for the diminished chord, we have this symbol right here, which is like a small circle. So we'll expound more on the, the use of the Roman numerals in a little bit. So far, we've laid out the triad notes uh, of the harmonized scale, but that shouldn't stop us from continuing and applying the same procedure to our chord extensions. Now, for the purpose of this video, I am going to stop at our seventh chords, but uh, on your own, feel free to work out the nines, the elevenths, and the thirteenths. The seventh from C is a B, right? So we'll start laying out the C major scale starting on B horizontally. So C, D, E, F, G, A. From here, we can just add the seven to our chord type formula. So C, E, G major triad, and you have B, which is the major seventh of C. So we have a major seventh for the one chord. Now, if we take a look at, let's say, E, right? So E, G, B is your minor triad. D is the minor seventh of E, so that's why it's a minor seven. For the seven, B, D, F, that is a diminished triad, right? And A is actually the minor seven or flat seven of B. And that makes this chord a half diminished seven, also known as the minor seven flat five. Now let's take a look at the five chord. We are going to have to tweak this a little bit because we have a major triad in G, B, and D. Okay, that's, that's your G major triad. But F is not the major seven of G. It's actually the flat seven. So I'm going to enclose the major designation in parentheses. So when you think of the 5-7 chord, it's going to be a dominant 7th instead of a major 7th. Now the explanation for that will, is upcoming. So over the course of this video series, we have been dealing with a lot of number names. And it's common to get confused along the way. I know I was. So I'm going to give you the diatonic function names for each of our Roman numeral chords. So we have a 1, our 2, our 3, our 4, five, six, and the minor seven. The one is also called the tonic. Ah, fix that. Okay, tonic. <laughs> and then the two is the super tonic. The three is the medium. The four is the subdominant. Five is your dominant. Six is the submedian. And the seven is your leading tone. This is just handy to, to know off the top of your head. But if you can't be bothered to memorize these terms, at least take note of the tonic and the dominant because these terms show up even in street music speak. Now circling back to our five chord, the dominant, just take note that for the five chord, we have a minor seven or a flat seven combined with a major triad. I have also uh, mentioned this in part 4.5 when we talked about uh, seventh chords. A major triad with a flat seven is always designated as a dominant seven instead of a major seven or a major flat seven. That's because <laughs> that gets confusing. So major triad plus a flat seven equals a dominant seven. Let's turn to a fresh page and I will show you how to apply the harmonized scale formula to the different keys. So let's write in our Roman numeral names. And our C major scale. Now I'm going to pick another key, let's say D major. D, E, sharp, G, A, B, C sharp. Now in D major, your tonic, D will be a major chord, right? E will be a minor chord. F sharp will be also a minor chord. G is a major chord. A is a major chord. B will be a minor chord, C sharp, the leading tone is a diminished chord. 
So if you've ever wondered which chords belong to D major, that's your answer right there. Uh, let's pick another key. Uh, let's do a flat key this time. Say A flat. Okay. So we have A flat, B flat, C, D flat, E flat, F, G. Right? So A flat major, the chords are A flat major, B flat minor, C minor, D flat major, E flat major, F minor, G diminished. Now, of course, if you want to go beyond the basic triads, you can use the harmonized seventh scale formula that we previously laid out. Now, let's pick another key F major. F, G, A, B flat, C, D. Now, harmonized sevenths in F major is as follows. You have your F major 7, G minor 7, A minor 7, B flat major 7, C dominant 7, or just C7, D minor 7, and E half diminished 7. If you're having a hard time finding your key signature notes, refer back to part two of this video series. Now here are some uses of the harmonized scale. So let's flip back to our previous page. So far we've been looking at the harmonized scale as a group of block chords, but we can also view this as separate voices with each voice playing the scale notes simultaneously. Okay, so if you take your root voice and they play the root notes of the scale, then you apply the third voice to, let's say, another instrument or a second guitar and have them play simultaneously, then that is your introduction to parallel diatonic harmony. So you can harmonize one of these voices either in thirds or in fifths or in sevenths or any combination thereof. Now let's flip back to the other page and think of these as our diatonic chords. So one of the uses I've already mentioned. Um, if you're writing a song in a particular key, instead of blindly hunting for chords that will go together, the most obvious choices are already uh, presented to you if you know this formula. So if you're writing a song in G major, you can lay out the G major notes, B, C, D, E, F sharp. And from there, you can pick from all these possible chords, either G major to C major to E minor to D to F sharp diminished and so on. Now, another use for the diatonic chords formula is when you are trying to figure out the chords to a particular song. Because instead of having dozens of possible chords to choose from, um, once you figure out the key, then your choices are boiled down to three major chords, three minor chords, and a diminished chord. Inversely, if you already know all the chords of the song but not really sure what the key is, you can take those chords and put them side by side and compare them to our diatonic chords formula and that will eliminate all the other possibilities. So let's say you have a song with the following chords. A, F sharp minor, G sharp minor, and B. So I have all my sharp key signatures here and let's just find where those chords are. So we have an A major, right? So that's a minor, that wouldn't work. That's a major, but then we don't have a G sharp minor, so that wouldn't work. We have a G sharp minor here, we have an A here, we also have an F sharp minor here, and, and we have the B. So chances are that song uses all the notes of the E major scale. The next uses I will discuss for the diatonic chords will involve the Roman numeral designations. Now it's fairly common to talk about chord progressions using the Roman numeral designations, particularly in the jazz world. So if you've ever heard the term 251, this is exactly what it pertains to. A 251 chord progression is the two chord going to the five chord and finally resolving back to the one chord. So if somebody says, let's play a 251 in B. So that means you get the two of the B major scale, which is C sharp, C sharp minor, 
go to the five of B major, which is F sharp, and finally go to the one of B major, which is B major. So the chords of a two five one in B major are C sharp minor, F sharp major, and B major. And of course, if it's a jazz gig, then you gotta use at least seventh chords. So the jazz version of a two five one in B major would be a C sharp minor seven, an F sharp dominant seven, and a B major seven. Now another trendy Roman numeral chord progression is the one six four five chord progression, also known as the chord progression that killed pop music, because a lot of songs use it. So a one six four five would be your tonic major. To the six, which is the submediant minor, to the subdominant major four, to the five chord, which is your dominant. A one six four five in A would be A major, F sharp minor, D major, E major. Let's change the order a little bit. So let's go one five six four. So G major, that is G, the five is D, six is E minor, four is C. <laughs> and that's pretty much every uh, hit pop song to come out for the past couple of years. <laughs> now another use for the Roman numerals would be for transposing songs. So let's say you have a song that is written for a male key and you want to transpose it to a female key. And just for this example, let's say the chords are G, B minor, C, and D. Now let's convert these chords to their Roman numeral names. That will be your one, the third, the fourth, and the fifth. I'm going to turn to my flat keys page. And let's say, let's pick E flat. That's a common uh, female voice range. So the one would be E flat, the three would be G minor, the four would be A flat major, and finally the fifth would be B flat major. Now let's say E flat is still not quite comfortable, so let's lower it, let's go to D flat major instead. So one, three, four, five in D flat major will be D flat major, F minor, G flat major, A flat major. So that's just some of the uses for the harmonized scale, also known as the diatonic chords. If you know of any other uses that I may have missed, please share it with everybody in the comments section below. So that concludes part five of music theory for guitarists. In part six, we will finally come to the topic that all of you have been clamoring for which is scales and modes. So again, I invite you to subscribe, hit that notification bell so you'll know exactly when I upload that video. If you dug the harmonized scale and diatonic chords, please give this video a thumbs up like and feel free to share it with your friends. And if you have any other questions, just put them in the comments. Okay, you know the drill. Practice makes perfecto. I'll see you guys again soon. Cheers.